Rejoice now, heavenly hosts and choirs of angels, and let your trumpets shout salvation for the victory of our mighty King. Rejoice and sing now, all the round earth, bright with a glorious splendor, for darkness has vanished by our eternal King. Rejoice and be glad now, Mother Church, and let your holy courts in radiant light resound with the praises of your people. All you who stand near this marvelous and holy flame, pray with me to God the Almighty for the grace to sing the worthy praise of this great light through Jesus Christ his Son our Lord who lives and reigns with him in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right and good, always and everywhere, with our whole heart and mind and voice, to praise you, the invisible, almighty, and eternal God, and your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who at the feast of the Passover paid for us the debt of Adam's sin, and by his blood delivered your faithful people. This is the night when you brought our fathers, the children of Israel, out of bondage in Egypt, and led them through the Red Sea on dry land. This is the night when all who believe in Christ are delivered from the gloom of sin and are restored to grace and holiness of life. This is the night when Christ broke the bonds of death and hell and rose victorious from the grave. How wonderful! And beyond our knowing, O God, is your mercy and loving kindness to us, that to redeem a slave you gave a son. How holy is this night, when wickedness is put to flight, and sin is washed away, 
It restores innocence to the fallen and joy to those who mourn. It casts out pride and hatred and brings peace and concord. How blessed is this night when earth and heaven are joined and man is reconciled to God. Holy Father, accept our evening sacrifice, the offering of this candle in your honor. May it shine continually to drive away all darkness. May Christ, the morning star who knows no setting, find it ever burning. He who gives his light to all creation and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us hear the record of God's saving deeds in history, how he saved his people in ages past, and let us pray that our God will bring each of us to the fullness of redemption. God delivers Israel at the Red Sea. When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they feared greatly. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the people of Israel may go through the sea on dry ground and I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they shall go in after them, and I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his host, his chariots, and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. Then the angel of God who was going before the host of Israel moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them, coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was the cloud and the darkness, and it lit up the night without one coming near the other at all, all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind, all night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided and the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left the Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea all Pharaoh's horses his chariots and his horsemen and in the morning watch the Lord in the pillar of fire and of cloud, looked down on the Egyptian forces and threw the Egyptian forces into a panic, clogging their chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from before Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, 
and the sea returned to its normal course when the morning appeared. And as the Egyptians fled into it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen. Of all the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider has he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my Savior. This is my God, and I will praise him. The God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord? among the gods, who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders. You stretched forth your right hand, the earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. With your might, you brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them, on the mount of your possession, the resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Let us pray. O God, whose wonderful deeds of old shine forth even to our own day, you once delivered by the power of your mighty arm your chosen people from slavery under Pharaoh to be a sign for us of the salvation of all nations by the water of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may be numbered among the offspring of Abraham and rejoice in the inheritance of Israel. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Beloved, I invite you to stand as you're able. most holy night to shine with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church that spirit of adoption which is given to us in baptism, that we, being renewed both in body and mind, may worship you in sincerity and truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. May be seated. Oh. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I invite you to stand as you're able. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now, after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, 
For I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Would you pray with me? Lord, with all our hearts and minds and voices, we cry Alleluia to you. Come among us, and let us bow down before you, our risen King. Fill us with the good news that you are alive forevermore. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. We know something of fear. Having lived through the past year, we've been taught something we might prefer, well, to not know. The loneliness, the isolation, the frustration, and the constant unknowns have taken their toll. Sometimes it's been downright depressing. At other times, it feels like we're living in a really bad 1970s horror movie. The attack of the killer tomatoes meets the towering inferno meets the night of the walking dead. It's been that bad and that surreal. Last night at the liturgy of our Lord's Passion, we explored why some of the non-disciples of Jesus missed what he was saying and what he was doing. We looked into their mindset and how they never took the time to listen, really listen to Jesus. But tonight has to be different. Since the moment Jesus was arrested, and especially since the moment he was put on the cross, those who had taken the time to listen to him were living a nightmare. A nightmare that had to seem longer than any pandemic. Those who had lived with him, those, especially the women, who had ministered to him, those who had journeyed with him, those who had walked away from life as they knew it in order to be with him, must have felt like the world ended. Their fear involved way more than just the loss of an idea. Their fear was existential. Were they the next to be crucified? If Judas could betray Jesus, who might be ready to betray them? Would the religious leaders be looking for them? If they survived the immediate danger, how would they ever go back to living a quote-unquote normal life? Normal was dead. Hope had been laid in a tomb. Darkness had become the new normal. But a ray of light caught my eye as we read the Passion story from Mark's Gospel on Palm Sunday. I had never noticed the reference to Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph seeing the tomb where Jesus was laid. I had often pondered the guts and devotion displayed by Joseph of Arimathea, how he risked 
everything to ask for the body of Jesus and how he and Nicodemus took Jesus down from the cross and buried him. But I had never noticed the silent witness of the women who watched so they would know where to go when it was time to anoint Jesus' body. Joseph and Nicodemus were great men, leaders among God's chosen people. But most of us are not counted among the great and men and women of this world. Most of us are living normal lives and playing the hands that are dealt us. We are the Marys. We are the ones who in our own small ways live with the fear and face down the difficult realities. Most of us are not Peter, James, or John. Most of us deal with our fear in whispers, not in great speeches. From the moment the sky turned dark on crucifixion day, when the earth shook and the curtain was torn in two from top to bottom, the little band of intimate followers, especially the women, would have felt like they were standing on quicksand. The physical darkness would have merely reinforced the emotional and spiritual darkness they felt. They would have groped for the smallest light, the tiniest hope. But as we know from sacred scripture, they wouldn't find it, not until the darkness of a fearful Saturday night gave way to the first glints of dawn on a Sunday morning. A second earthquake would herald the opening of the tomb. The darkness would be replaced by the dazzling brightness of an angel. And the certainty of defeat would be replaced by the literally unbelievable news that Jesus was not in the tomb. Can you imagine the shaking and the shock experienced by the two Marys? Can you imagine the depression met by the bizarre news, met by the sight of an angel, met by the sight of an empty tomb, met by the, the angel's message, met by actually encountering the risen Jesus? Scripture tells us they were filled with a combination of fear and great joy. Those of us who have been through this pan pandemic know a tiny slice of that emotion. What's taken us a year to experience as we begin to return to fellowship with each other, the disciples experienced in a matter of days and hours. One kind of fear giving way to another, depression suddenly giving way to inexpressible joy. The only language to describe it, tears. Weeping tears of joy after tears of grief. It's so important for the church to tell this story. It's so important that we tell the world how God turned our weeping into dancing, how he gave us beauty for ashes and hope for despair. Just as Jesus told the two Marys to go and tell the others to meet him in Galilee, so we must go and tell the world to meet him in the here and now. God tells us, that now is the acceptable moment. He tells us to meet him and share with him while this moment lasts, to work while there is light and while the fields are ripe for harvest. Church, Jesus is risen from the dead. Get up, get out of here, and tell everyone you meet that there is hope. Tell them that the fear has been banished. Tell them that despair is fleeing. Tell them that isolation and depression are no more. Tell them that Jesus loves them and wants to meet them. Do it today. Don't wait. Would you pray with me?
Jesus, there really are no words with which to thank you. The only way we can thank you is to share you. To share what you have done and to share your victory with those who are sitting in darkness. Enliven us. Motivate us. Send us. Use us. We are yours. Let us share your dazzling light. We ask this in your holy and precious name. Amen. Beloved, I invite you to stand as you're able. Would you turn with me to page 16 in your bulletin, and we will tonight renew our baptismal vows. Through the Paschal Mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him into newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism, by which we once renounced the devil and all his works, and promised to serve God faithfully in his one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Beloved, do you here in the presence of God and the Church renew the solemn promises and vows made at your baptism and commit yourself to keep them? I do. Do you renounce the devil and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the empty promises and deadly deceits of this world that corrupt and destroy the creatures of God, I renounce them. Do you renounce the sinful desires of the flesh that draw you from the love of God, I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and confess him as your Lord and Savior, I do. Do you joyfully receive the Christian faith as revealed in the Holy Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments? I do. Will you obediently keep God's holy will and commandments and walk in them all the days of your life? I will, the Lord being my helper. Let us now reaffirm our faith in the words of the ancient baptismal confession, the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I do. I, do. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in Jesus Christ? I do. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I do. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their doctrine, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. You may be seated. Beloved, let us pray for the church and for the world. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the faithful departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Coming to the Holy Table, let us remember these words. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom, and you are exalted as head over all. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of heaven. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Beloved, I invite you to stand as you're able. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give him thanks and praise. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death, we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also, that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, so that he may dwell in us and we in him. And bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Mary and Blessed Martha of Bethany, and all your saints into the fullness of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Beloved, for those who are worshiping at home, I would invite you to pray this prayer for spiritual communion with me. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you, together with all your faithful people gathered around every altar of your church, and I embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin, into true and lasting freedom in Christ the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.